name's Coel and this is a guest video for those pesky dames on this week's subject of marriage equality and I'm specifically going to be talking about civil marriage. Um, apologies in advance if this video is a little bit choppy because it's my first time editing a video. Marriage can be such an emotive and difficult subject to debate because individual people see it so differently and attach such different significances to it. I mean, some people just abhor the entire institution because it has such dodgy and problematic baggage attached to it, which is quite understandable. But for other people, it's this sacrosanct institution that we should revere, that's tied up with their religious beliefs. Other people think it's one of the building blocks of society, um, as politicians like to say. And, and for other people, the most important thing about marriage is the procreation of children. And in terms of the equal marriage debate, often these are the sorts of things that get talked about, whether or not same-sex marriages fit the criteria which individual people feel should define a marriage. But actually, when it comes to civil marriage, none of these things are actually relevant to what the function of civil marriage is and, and yeah, what it's for in the first place. So let's look at that. Why does civil marriage exist? What is the function of civil marriage? Well, to define that, we have to go back to what the function of the state is. Now, there are historical reasons for why each nation state formed as it did. But ultimately, in, in democratic societies today, the function of the state is to pool our resources, and administer them, and address the needs of the citizenry. At least nominally, that's what the function of the state is. And that applies to what the function of civil marriage is as well. Some people in relationships express a need for their partnership to be formally recognised by the state for whatever reason, because of the significance they attach to it, because of um, you know practical reasons like visitation rights and property rights and things like that. So actually, the function of civil marriage has nothing to do with what individual people feel marriage is for. It's just there and available because some people in relationships express a need for it. And we can see this in the fact that before a couple gets married today, they don't have to take a test to prove that their marriage fits the criteria that other people think should apply to a marriage. They don't have to prove that they're going to have children. They don't have to show that there's a religious element to their union. They don't have to express how excited they are about becoming one of the building blocks of society. Marriage is just available to them because they have a need for it. And if they then need to get divorced, soon after their marriage, they can do that as well. Civil marriage is there to fulfil a need that some people have. And for that reason, who is included in civil marriage, rather than reflecting the individual prejudices or opinions of individual people towards marriage, should instead reflect what kind of consenting legal adult relationships actually exist in our society. Because people from all stripes of relationships have expressed the desire and the need to have their personal relationship formalised by the state. You know, it's not just opposite sex couples who want to get married. People in same sex relationships, people in polyamorous relationships that include three or more people, civil marriage should be open as an option to anyone in a legal consenting adult relationship who expresses a need for it. And what anyone else thinks about homosexuality being wrong, or polyamory being wrong, or marriage only being for the procreation of children should be irrelevant. Because the function of civil marriage is to fulfil the needs of individual people in relationships. And that's the reason the question of who gets to be included in civil marriage should not be decided by democratic vote. I'm glad that there are states in the US that have passed equal marriage laws after a positive popular vote and you know that our government is holding a consultation on the issue because it is leading us down the path to marriage equality eventually. But ultimately, who gets to get married and why they get married and what the nature of their marriage is is irrelevant to democracy, it's irrelevant to what the majority think. You might think that marriage is the building block of society, it's the one thing keeping us from the coming of the apocalypse and that therefore other people's marriages are your business. But that isn't reflected in the way that civil marriage works now. As I was saying earlier, people's relationships aren't vetted before they get married to see whether, they, whether their relationship is stable enough, whether they fit your image of what a marriage should be. Civil marriage is there to fulfil a need that some people in relationships have, and there are many people who have expressed need for it who are not currently included in it. So they should be included in it tomorrow. It's as simple as that. 
democratic opinions are irrelevant when it comes to this. Okay, let's deal with some anticipated objections to what I've said in this video. First objection, and this is something that anti-gay rights people say over and over again, if you're saying that who is included in civil marriage should reflect the kinds of relationships that actually exist in society, then what about people marrying dogs or objects or children? It's already been covered by Becca, but I'm going to say it anyway. Child abuse is not legal. Marrying children will never be legal. Dogs and objects don't have personhood rights. They can't consent to marriages or sign marriage licenses. It doesn't actually hurt anyone if somebody wants to marry an object, but when it comes to civil marriage, objects can't sign marriage licenses. I specified that I was talking about legal consenting relationships between adults. Relationships with dogs and child abuse are not comparable to that. Second objection I'm anticipating is, if all civil marriage is, is a way for your partnership to be formally recognised by the state, then why aren't people in same-sex relationships happy with civil partnerships? A lot of people actually prefer civil partnerships because they don't, you know, you, you get all the same benefits and they don't like the term marriage and the baggage attached to it and that's, of course, absolutely fine and understandable. But when civil partnerships and marriages are in practical terms the same thing, but who can get them is divided along the lines of the genders of the people in the relationship. And that's harking back to separate but equal. That division is not okay. The significance of that division matters. The significance of that division is that you're othering an entire type of relationship that already experiences a lot of prejudice and discrimination against it. So open it up, you know, get rid of that distinction and just have civil partnerships and marriages both available for anybody who wants it, who are in legally consenting adult relationships. Opposite sex couples, same sex couples, people in polyamorous relationships with, with two or more people. Let both marriage and civil partnership reflect the diverse needs of people in all kinds of legal consenting adult relationships. Simple as that. Hopefully that answers any objections that anyone seeing this might have, but you know, if you have any others, then um, comment in the comment box. And uh, yeah, um, thanks for watching the video and hope you like it. And you know, we can maybe have a rational discussion. Um, thanks.